Why, hello, Groovy Cat. <laughs> I'm scared too. Thanks for joining me again on this Black Rose adventure. It's sad. Real sad. It's a nice story. It's freaking me out. And I've been looking at my shoes the whole time. They're nice shoes. They're Nikes. I got them on sale. My nephew works at a very nice cobbling store. I don't know. Anyway, we well, gotta get back into this adventure. I wanna, I wanna finish it up today. Okay. You want to know some things. I want to know some things too. So let's open the door, get on the floor, everybody do the dinosaur. Looking straight ahead. <laughs> they still haven't buried them. <laughs> what was with that Sullivan has kid laugh? In his car <laughs> for two days and Myrtle for three. <laughs> Because Conrad refused to touch Myrtle's coffin after her funeral, it had to be put aside so Sullivan could have his. Conrad still simply doesn't want to have anything to do with the burial of either of them, even if all he's doing is preparing a future grave without actually touching the coffins. I'm starting to wonder if he had some type of unpleasant encounter with Myrtle and Sullivan's coffins, or he heard some absurd rumor about their corpses. What's sad is that Myrtle and Sullivan don't have relatives who care enough about their burials to actually do something about this. Michael was embarrassed to have to Damn. tell all the relatives and friends that the actual burials couldn't be held yet. Even so, none of them objected. Maybe they just didn't see a point in doing so, considering the person they would be doing it for is already gone. I don't know. Like, you gotta at least send them off to the next realm. I mean, they're dead. Their bodies, they're gonna stick around until they, what they know is taken care of. That's as why I'm going out in a Viking ship on fire. I do get a strange vibe now in the visitation room. The atmosphere in there is starting to feel different. The air feels heavier, a little bit oppressive even. It seems to be more noticeable today than it was yesterday. I'm not quite sure if I believe in ghosts or not, but it seems to fit what I've heard before about locations having uncomfortable negative energy due to evil or extremely upset spirits. Nah, Maybe just get an just orc. Stuff the air. There aren't any windows in there, and it is the middle of summer. Isn't that like a fire safety hazard? Is this place going to come on fire? I don't want to fire. This girl is on fire. Okay, there's nothing over there. I wonder if I'm done over there. Fine. Fine. Oh no, let's read it anyway. It turns out that Devin got into the morgue by stealing Sullivan's key card from the office. Key Mrs. Card. Rains had been in there and forgot to lock it when she left. Nobody knows exactly how the kid figured out the passcode, but considering what a flake his mother is, that's probably just something else she inadvertently compromised. They're burying Sullivan with a few Tell of his belongings from a funeral code. home. I guess because he had worked here for so long and was so loyal to his job. Michael revealed that one of those belongings is Sullivan's key card. Of course, they would need to deactivate it from the system to avoid any breaches in the chance that it was stolen. But then again, Mrs. Rains would be the one who would do that. Why am I floating? I discovered earlier today that Devin had stolen the system lock override key as well and hidden it somewhere in the building. This has got to be the most troublesome, ill-behaved kid I have ever encountered. <laughs> My fingers got confused of which buttons are which. Anything on the podium? Hear ye, hear ye. Shit gone weird, everybody go home. They stitched him back together. Glorious Comic Sans once again. Thank you very much. Really puts me right into the deal. 
Thank you for not pushing me back. Like a bitch. I don't think I know the code yet. Let's try it anyway. Well, don't know what. Gotta go back. Running around at the speed of sound. Can't jump to see if the key is there. Mm. I don't quite understand what it is I need to do. Is it behind the door? Um, hmm. Do I gotta like go all the way back? I'm supposed to keep going forward if I'm always going back. The family room. Oh, no paper. That's not creepy. Grief-stricken man killed by train after blinding himself. children. Yes, you can see. And there's a train track as a child. Do I really want to read all of this? They never buried them. They never buried either of them. Both are still here. Something was written on the back. They say that if you take his rose, he wakes up. That's the only way his coffin will open. I hear that he also tears you into three pieces if he catches you. Oh dear gosh. Just, just a kid. He's freaked out too. All those attending the funeral service for Sullivan James, please gather in the visitation room. Working on it. Wait, this isn't a visitation room. This is a lie. Hi. There's a bunch of ghastlies going. feeling about that fireplace. Now that's a nice floor. Dare you, dare you, double dare you. Oh, I'm sorry, I have a brain, so fuck it. That's a nice curtain. Those are nice curtains. I don't want to, man. Oh, you're gonna double dare me? Is it a double dog dare? It is? Fine. Uh, where am I going after this? So I take it whoa run for dear life over here where over where over her there and around just keep running in circles I guess is that door open no it won't be anyways Whatever. Sully, my main man. I'm just gonna take this. I mean, you won't mind, will you? Sully, you won't mind if I 
take that rose from you. Right. Next time, I'm gonna take the rose because it's time for me to end it here. You thought I was gonna be in imminent danger. <laughs> Not right now. But I gotta cut it off here. For I've been epic awesome, you know, but it's your turn to be awesome too. Clickety clack that like. If you like that show. Tip it tap your comments if you wanna speak me. Speak to me. If you want to speak to me. And subscribe if you like that stuff. I'll see you in the next episode. And hey. You take care now. Adventure awaits. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Scary.